On the 14th of April, 1865, one of the most infamous gunshots was fired inside a Ford's theatre in Washington. As he was watching a play titled Our American Cousin, John Wilkes Booth fired a shot into Abraham Lincoln's head, the President of the United States. Shortly after, Lincoln was taken from the theatre to the nearest house on 10th Street. The trip to the White House was considered too dangerous, and seven men moved the President and he was taken to the house of a tailor. The doctors cut away Lincoln's clothes and discovered no other wounds but found the President was cold. But within a number of hours, Abraham Lincoln was dead. His face in his final moments had become calm, and there was no apparent sign of suffering. But in the aftermath of his assassination, a number of people were arrested, and some were sentenced to death. One of those was a woman, named Mary Surratt, who was the only woman to be executed for her involvement in the Lincoln Conspiracy. Join us today as we look at the execution of the woman involved in Lincoln's assassination, and as always, to support our channel please make sure to subscribe. Mary Jenkins met John Harrison Surratt in 1839 and the couple would marry. John purchased a huge amount of land from his adoptive father and the couple and their children would move back at some point to the District of Columbia to help John's mother run a farm. Mary Surratt became involved in raising funds to build a church but her husband was not happy with his wife's religious activities. His behaviour would get worse over time as he drank heavier and failed to pay his debts, but also he had a temper that grew violent, and he took this out on Mary. The family's business enterprises would expand over time, and they would buy land around the tavern and name it Surratsville, and the settlement had a post office, forge, and around a dozen houses. The American Civil War broke out on April 12, 1861, and the tavern hosted many Confederate sympathisers. But Mary's tavern became a safe house for Confederate spies, and the activities around their land attracted attention from the Union government. Around 300 soldiers camped there and investigated the Surratt's Confederate activities. John Surratt would die around August 25th, 1862, and the family were in financial problems. Mary found her husband's unpaid debts, and several of her slaves ran away, and Mary was tired of running the farm, tavern, and other businesses without her son's help and she contemplated moving to her townhouse in the city. She took possession of this in October 1864, and it had four stories, and she leased out her tavern, and she then advertised for lodgers in a newspaper. However, Louis J. Weichmann would move into Surratt's boarding house on the 1st of November 1863, and then John Surratt Jr. was introduced to John Wilkes Booth, the man who would assassinate Lincoln. John Jr. was recruited into the conspiracy to kidnap Lincoln, and Confederate agents then began to come to Mary's boarding house a lot. George Atzerott and Lewis Powell would board at her townhouse for some time, and these became co-conspirators in the plot to kill Lincoln. Atzerott visited the house a number of times, and he was even evicted by Mary, as he was such a heavy drinker, but he continued to frequent the house. David Herald, another conspirator, also visited there a number of times. But as part of the plot to kidnap or kill Lincoln... Two rifles, ammunitions and supplies were stored at the Surat Tavern. On the 11th of April, Mary rented a carriage and drove to the tavern, and she went to collect a debt, but she may have also gone to get the weapons to be used in the killing. Booth would also visit the boarding house, and he gave Mary a package with binoculars in them. Booth's plan was to assassinate Lincoln, and have Atzerott kill the Vice President, Andrew Johnson, and for Powell to kill Secretary of State, William H. Seward. Booth managed to kill Lincoln, Atzerod never attempted to kill Johnson, but Powell stabbed Seward and he survived. As they fled the city, they picked up rifles and the binoculars from Surratt's tavern. But at 2am on the 15th of April 1865, members of the police force visited the Surratt boarding house, looking for Wilkes Booth and John Surratt. They may have been alerted to Confederate activity there, but within 45 minutes of the attack, John Surratt's name was linked. A neighbour would tell the army that three men had come to Mary's house on the night of the assassination and that one had mentioned Booth in a theatre. Federal soldiers visited the house again and they would find in Mary's room a picture of Booth and also a pistol and a mould for making bullets. Mary was arrested and she was then held in the annex of the old Capitol prison before she was transferred to the Washington arsenal. Armed guards watched her cell 
and her cell was airy and bigger than others, and food was served for her four times a day. Mary was kept well compared to the others, who were sat in padded canvas bags to prevent them taking their own lives. Others wore manacles, but Mary was not shackled, and she was allowed visits from her daughter. A military tribunal was chosen as a venue for the trials, and all eight conspirators were tried simultaneously. Mary was allowed a bonnet, fan and veil to hide her face, and she was ill during her trial. She was charged with aiding, abetting, concealing and harbouring her co-defendants. It was clear that the conspirators met inside her boarding house, and this was confirmed by a number of witnesses. The defence claimed that the other defendants came to the house without Mary knowing what was going on, and when the trial ended, Mary Surratt was so ill that she had to stay in her cell. However, she was found guilty and was sentenced to death, despite being very ill, and she was the only woman linked to the conspiracy. A death sentence was passed, and the night before her execution, Surratt's priest and her daughter came to visit Powell and asked him to try and save Mary's life. But this would not happen, and there were more pleas for her life. Construction of the gallows for the hanging of the conspirators began on the 5th of July, after the execution order had been signed. It was made in the south part of the Arsenal courtyard. It was 12 feet high and 20 feet square in its size. The nooses were made, and the man who made them made Mary's noose the night before the execution, with five loops rather than the regulation seven, as he thought the government would never hang a woman. The nooses were tested and they held out, and soldiers were forced to dig the graves. At noon on the 6th of July, Mary was told she would be hanged the next day, and she wept a great deal. The priest remained with her until the next day, and she was still in great pain. Her daughter even went to the White House to beg for her mother's life, and this was rejected again. At 11.25am, further tests of the gallows continued, and before noon Mary was taken from her cell, and she was sat on a chair near to the entrance of the courtyard. It was a very hot day, and at 1.15pm, on the 7th of July, 1865, the four condemned prisoners were escorted up the steps. Each prisoner's ankles and wrists were bound, and Mary Surratt led the way. Over a thousand people were there to watch, and also family members looked on. The order for the execution was read, and Mary, weak from illness or swooning in fear, had to be held up by two soldiers and her priest. The condemned were in chairs and Mary collapsed into hers. White cloth bound her arms to the sides, and her ankles and thighs together, and from the scaffold Powell said, Mrs Surratt is innocent, she doesn't deserve to die with the rest of us. Two priests held a crucifix to her lips, and a white bag was then placed over her head. The noose was secured, and Surratt's bonnet was taken off, as the noose was placed over her neck. She complained that the bindings hurt her arms, and then the prisoners were asked to move forward towards the nooses. Chairs were taken away, and her last words were, Please don't let me fall. Surratt stood on the drop for around ten seconds, then the captain clapped his hands. Four soldiers knocked out the supports and the condemned fell. Mary had moved forward enough to barely step on the drop, and her body snapped tight at the end of the rope, and swung back and forth, and she died quickly with little struggle. Mary's body was inspected by a doctor, and was left to hang for thirty minutes before it was cut down. Her body was cut down at 1.59pm, and as she was cut down her head fell forward. Mary Surratt was a woman who owned a boarding house, where the members of the Lincoln Conspiracy would meet and plan their actions. Many believed she was innocent and should not have been killed, but she was a woman who despite this, would have known intricately about the plan to assassinate Lincoln. Incriminating evidence was found in her quarters at the boarding house, but she was very weak and ill when she was executed, and in her final days she suffered a great deal. Thanks for watching. To support our channel, please make sure to subscribe, and once again, thank you so much for watching.